Hi guys, so in today's video, I'm going to take a look at your plugin chains. So, what is a plugin chain? Well, a plugin chain is this really. When you're adding plugins onto an effect, so we have the kick routed to this channel here. Any effects that we put on this is a plugin chain. And I'm going to show you what 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 order should we be using these, um, and how can we create some cool effects by um, manipulating our plugins chain. So, what I'm going to start with, I'm going to start with um, just a couple of rules really and the rest you know you can do what you want so the only rule really that is when plugging chains is that your limiter should always come at the end so here's my master chain here this is a limiter these are both limiters and this is doing a little bit of light limiting this is the main limiter you should always finish with a limiter if you're ever using limiters especially on your master limiters last if you're using limiters on your individual sounds limiter is always last so a couple of things we're going to look at today. I'm going to look at this ARP sound first of all. And I'm going to show you what I've done to it. So here we go. So a very basic ARP. Now, a couple of things I want to do first of all. And what I'll also do, just, just for this video, I'm going to add a, a compressor in as well. Um, okay, so in what order should should we be using these? Um, these you sort of plugins. So, if you so in order, if we put this compressor in first, for example, let's have a look. So, if we put the compressor in here, what what then happens is this: the compressed sound then goes into the EQ. So, because the compressor's first, the sound's being compressed, and then that compressed sound is being EQ'd. If we do it the other way around, if we switch these around, now if you're using FL Studio, you can just scroll your mouse wheel. If we switch these around, what's going to happen is that the raw sound, the raw app, is going to go into the EQ, it's going to be EQ'd, and then that EQ'd sound is then going to be compressed. So there's a difference there. There's a difference. So you can either have the sound EQ'd, and then that's then compressed, and then it's moved on, or you can have the compressed sound EQ'd. You're going to get different sounds. So let's first of all, let's add an extreme EQ into this. So you can hear a very slight difference there. Very, very slight. Now, once we start bringing other stuff in, for example, if we was to reverb, let's try the reverb on the track. So what we have here is with the, the raw app being compressed, then that overall sound is being fed into the, um, the reverb. We can swap these around as well. Straight away, you can hear a difference there because what's happening is if we swap these around, the raw sound is being re is going into the reverb, then the reverb and the raw sound is then being compressed, so you get a really loud uh, sound. So you have to decide really uh, what order you want these in. So we're going to base it on this sound first of all. So this sound, first of all, I don't think it needs a compressor at this stage. So I'm going to remove the, the, the compressor. So listening back to, let's turn everything off. So. I like the sound, but I think it's not bright enough. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add an EQ. And this is the EQ I've gone for. So I like that sound. That what I'm then going to do is I'm then going to add a delay. And then I'm going to add a reverb in as well. And now I've got this. This is what gives it the great sound. So this is an, ex an example of how we can manipulate stuff. So if we have the reverb after this, if we put this effect on first, this is um, all I'm doing here is giving it a little bit of stereo width and I'm adding a, a distortion onto it as well. So I'm amplifying it. <laughs> So 
what's happening here now is it's being EQ'd, that's, that's given. It's then that EQ'd sound is then being distorted. And then that sound then, the distorted sound, is then being um, delayed and, re and, and reverb added as well. So that the this distorted sound is being delayed and reverb. <laughs> But what I actually did in this is I actually put the distortion on after. So I've got the sound being EQ'd and my, the, re, the delay and the reverb are all being distorted. And you get this really cool effect you get. So what you're getting is the reverb is actually being distorted as well. And then we go on to the side chain. So the side chain is generally sort of last. You've got your limiter. If you had a limiter, it would be last. And the side chain would sort of be before the limiter. Um, now, one thing that you can actually do if you, with a side chain, if you want to even the sound out, you can add a compressor in after the side chain, and it evens the the sort of side chain the the side chain out. Um, so we can just add a So this compressor here is just working on the side chain. It's just slightly compressing the side chain to, to make it come back in quicker and even the sound out. And now this is a very good technique when you're using an actual compressor. What I'm using here is I'm using an actual just a, a volume shaper. So this is just taking the volume and it's just moving the volume up and down. Uh, the old school way of doing it is obviously to use a compressor and compress the sound. Um, and if you had a second compressor on after, it, it can even the sound out a little bit. So by adding my distortion plug-in on, after I've added my effects on, I get a really cool sound. Okay, so the general way that I would work, so let's we take the lead for example, the lead is number 11, so we'll just take this up, this lead here. Um, and what we'll actually do is we'll actually add a silent fin. Uh, this, the sound itself, this is using the uh, serum and the serum has a lot of great effects already built in. So I've got the distortion and everything already built in. So what I like to do here, I just go to banks. And we'll just load a very simple... Um, okay. And we'll just copy that into there. Sign that to 12, mute that, okay. Let's change that So, so I'm going to process from start to finish for you, and I'm going to show you the way that I would do it in the in the actual in the chain. So listen to the song. So first of all, bring the volume down a little bit. So the first thing that I would do is I would shape the sound. So this is the way that I would I'd do it. Uh, again, other people would, it, it, you know, it can be quite a thing. I quite, it can be a sort of an argument of, you know, what you put in first. Some people would say compression. Some people would say EQ. I would normally go in with an EQ first of all to shape it. So what we'll do is I'll then low cut it. Then 
could maybe make it a bit brighter. Okay, so I'm happy enough with that sound. So after I've EQ'd it, if I needed to compress it, I will then add a compressor in. I will be doing a separate video on compression, when to compress and why you compress. Uh, but look at that at a later date. So, so after I've compressed it, what I will then do is I will then add my effects. So my reverb and delay. Reverb and delay, there's really not much difference what at what part, you know, whether reverb then delay or delay then reverb. It doesn't really make much difference. Um, so I'll then add my delay. Okay, that sounds good so far. So that's what I will do. And then, um, what I'll sometimes do at the end of it, is I'll maybe, if I wanted to bring out the delay and the reverb a bit more, you could add a compression, another compressor in, which would then be compressing the delay and the reverb as well. What that does is that brings out the delay and the reverb more in the track. You can really hear it. Um, and a, a lot, This is used a lot in EDM as well. EDM would add um, a gated reverb on as well using using a compressor um, to give it a really, really big effect. You don't really need that as much in, in Synthwave. So that's what I would do. So if I'm, like again, I would add a limiter on the end. If I'm adding a limiter, it would always be at the end. Okay, and then if I'm adding a side chain in, the side chain would would be maybe maybe here after the effects. So the side chain would be sort of the, the last thing to do. So let's remove that limiter. We don't need to be compressing there. So so we'll add the side chain in there. So that is the order of what I would um, normally add stuff in. Now, from distorting it, the distortion would normally go in here. So I would my I I would tend to go with EQ then compression, then distortion, and other effects, like, for example, if we're in chorus. Then I will add my delay, reverb, my sidechain effect, and then the limiter. That's the rule that I will go by. And again, by moving these around, you can, have, you can get some really cool effects, like we've done with the app. So what we do is we're compressing the bass. <laughs> Like I said, we're using the distortion plugin on these as well. So, can we... Does does that mean that I always go by that? Does that mean I always go in that order? No. So, let's look at the bass now, for example. So, this bass, what, what I really want from this bass line is I really want a hard, gritty bass. And this is the bass line we've got. So, the sound itself doesn't need changing, so I don't need to add an EQ, I like the sound, I don't need to bring out anything in, in the actual sound, I like the sound, so I don't need to add EQ, so I can skip that part. But what I do need to add, is, is I want it rougher, and I want it more distorted, so what I've actually added here is a fab filter, um, Saturn, which is a distortion plug. <laughs> And that's made it a lot more distorted. Um, what I've then done here, I've then added more distortion using the CLA bass. Okay, now, when I've added the distortion, and when I've added, the, sorry, the two distortions, I'm then finding that the sound is not how I want it. It's not in what, you know, it doesn't sound how I want it. So then I've had to go in there and EQ it after. So what I've done here, I've added distortion, then I've added EQ. But the reason I've added EQ in here is because, like I said, this original sound, when, for example, when we were doing um, the ARP, 
listening to the app, I wanted to change the sound. That's why I did the, the EQ and then the effects after. The bass was fine. I like the sound of the bass, but once I've added the distortion plugins in, I've then had to go in and add some EQ to bring out sort of this area here. I then added my sidechain effect. I've then uh, compressed, I've then added a compression to bring out the sidechain more to make it snap back in quicker. So I've then got this. So what I've got is I've got a lot more darker sound. Um, so that, when you're adding your plugins, you need to decide whether you want this, whether you want to change the sound or you like the sound, um, and that depends on sort of the order. But like I said, get your EQ and your compression in first, depending on what order, if you need it, and then I will go with your your distortion plugins, your chorus plugins, anything like that. And then you delay your reverb, then your sidechain, and then if you need to add a compressor or a limit on the end of that, that's the sort of order I would sort of put it in. So this video has been a little bit all over the place. I know I've talked about a lot of things um, and I've sort of contradicted everything, you know, as I'm going along, but it really depends on your original sound. But that's the, that's the order that I would tend to put them in. Um, if you have any questions about it, certainly leave them in the comments and I can go back to this later on and do another video where I answer the questions based on this. Uh, based on this, because like I said, it is a, it can be a bit confusing um, me talking about it. So if you have any questions about it, certainly leave it in below. Um, so upcoming videos, like I said, I'm working on a compression video. Uh, I'm also working on a dark synth. This is part of a dark synth tutorial that I'm working on. Because um, I know a lot of people have been asking for that. So I'm working on a dark synth tutorial. I'm also working on like a chilled synth tutorial as well. And again, I've got some more of them um, feedback sessions to come out as well. If there's anything you're struggling with or anything you want me to take a look at, certainly leave it in the comments and I'll definitely, definitely have a look at it for you. Okay, so that's the end of the video. Thanks for watching.